even though it's been a while since I made my documentary slash narrative film essay about Friedrich Nietzsche, his problems and ideas and obsessions somewhat have not left me and every now and then I return to them. It's pretty heavy pulling here. Now I'm feeling like the pack animal. Once it's running, circles have something very philosophical about them. Because you come back to the same place where you started from. Aristotle, of course, said, it goes straight forwards and we win. But really everything goes in circle, like Nietzsche said. The eternal return. Oh, I love Nietzsche. He was pretty poorly understood in his time. He had some very good ideas and his time crushed him. Kills me. Why go up if you have to go back down again? Then just back up again. Just makes no sense. What if some demon were to say to you, this life as you live it and lived it, you will live an infinite number of times. And there will be nothing new in it. Every pain and joy, every thought and sigh, and everything small and large in your life will have to return to you in the same order. The eternal hourglass of existence will turn again and again with you inside it like a speck of dust. Hearing that, would you not throw yourself down, gnashing your teeth? and cursing the demon who spoke this? How sure of yourself would you have to be to feverishly crave nothing more but only this eternal confirmation of your existence? He's the only person I don't mind photographing me. You made me feel so comfortable. We were talking yesterday about Nietzsche having a grand time, weren't we? Yeah. Just wonderful. <laughs> and I learned plenty. We knew that he suffered personally, but he's telling us, hey, celebrate life. And if you really got it right, you will love your life so much, you would want to live it over again with all aspects of it. Don't take anything out. Probably at the at the end he did go mad, but it seems to me, Paul, that there is not such a, a sharp line between the highly, highly creative mind and mental disturbance. And that seems to become clearer the more I study and the more I learn. I remember reading somewhere that 80% of the U.S. writers had some kind of mental trouble. That doesn't surprise me. If you can imagine a spectrum and they're getting close to an edge and they're way beyond the masses in their thinking, they're pushing at the edges all the time. I, I'm interested in Nietzsche because I think he has a, a great deal to offer as generating an ascetics which leads to an ethics of self-fashioning. In Suspects Aratustra, say, I read it almost as if it's a handbook for how human beings, they learn to self-fashion themselves. Yeah, and, you know, tell them to exercise the art of living. Yeah, right. I, I, I told you, the art of living is not for everybody. For, you know... What? Right. I mean, I tell my students, look, you guys are... You know, represent 1% of the fucking world. You can read books and stay, you know, come to class and stuff like that. 
most of the people in the world are, are struggling just to eat. Yeah. But actually, what do you mean, whose life is it anyway? Well, the question is, is that most of our life, including my own, has not been chosen. I mean, just think about some of the key aspects in your life, your language. I mean, you, you don't choose your language. What do you want out of life? How much of it did you actually really reflect on? Most people get married, for instance, do you think they've ever asked themselves whether marriage is a good thing, whether we should get married, that we should marry only one person at a time? Or do you think they just fall into it? Well, they, obviously they fall in. Because well, that's what I mean by whose life is it anyway, right? You see, if, if, if most of these things have been determined for us by the fact that we were born in a certain place in a certain time, it seems to me that, that that's not a life that I've made for myself. It seems to me that it's pretty, and it's pretty hard once you're into that life to be able to break with those patterns. When I get threatened or scared, for instance, I wind up, you know, not necessarily being honest to myself or to other people. So it, honesty is something I struggle to be. Most of the times it's not hard, but on really crucial questions it becomes not so easy to be, you know, as honest as I would like to be. To me, those things that are, that are obvious, I think, need to always be suspect to questions. So what most people take for granted, I'm always dubious about. Here's a question I ask my student. I want to know what you're going to do if you're born German, all right, 1925, and you're brought up in the Weimar, and you're brought up with all the trouble of the First World War, and now Hitler comes to power, and you go to war, I want to know what you're going to do. Do you think you're going to stand up to this? I want to know what you're going to do you see, if you're offered a chance to be in the Einsatzgruppen, how many people think you, know, you, could, you could go against the flow of your cultures you know, telling you that we're at war, this is the enemy, they have to be killed. They don't look like the enemy, but they really are what? The enemy. I want to know how many people can stand up and say, I won't do it. How many of us can stand up to our own governments? But we know if you take the Holocaust seriously, you see, and you integrate it into your everyday, you know one of the key aspects of, of what it means not to get trapped in these kinds of problematics is that you have to be able to stand up to your you know, government, as the Greeks knew with the word paratitsis, you know, tell the truth to power. Why was I thinking about Nietzsche in this old, abandoned, place full of decayed furniture maybe there was something in me that thought that uh, the giants in the past don't meet the current recognition they really deserve and then in some strange synchronistic manner when I was walking back I ran into a cabbage field what did Nietzsche say about those who don't understand him and the masses that strangely fall into uh, shallow dichotomies like altruism and egoism. He called them cabbage heads. Is this who we really are? I'm not a Nietzsche fan. I was soldier, you know, five years, yeah, on the fourth side. When the, the war came to the end, to the end, it was quite clear that uh, there's a total uh, defeat. Yeah. Then some, some, com some said, you know, Nietzsche has lost the war. 
upset somebody of us who was a bit more educated already, older. Yeah, he was right, I think, today. What you, you must not say things like that. Of course he was right. Are we so shallow and stupid and limited that we take great ideas of great minds and twist those ideas into horrible social cultural machines that lead to slaughter of millions? <laughs>